Yeah, come along now on this Friday. All right, here on Indiana Sports Beat. As we get set for what should be a pretty loaded show, Justin Kalen hosted for you here for probably the first hour or so. Jim headed to North Carolina to take care of some personal matters. Uh, but we hope to have him on about 7 o'clock. Surely a loaded show for you all this evening, or this morning. Jeez, I'm still in last night mode as we'll have... Justin Soakland on the show. That'll be about 640. Sammy Jacobs will be on about 620. Drew Davis at 720. And then Todd Leary, as he does every Friday, will join us about 740 to discuss Indiana and their game last night and a huge win for Indiana last night. Surely a big day on the program here today. But let's go ahead and get into our headlines from last night. Here are a look at your daily Hoosier headlines on this 8th day of March 2019 as Damon Bailey inducted into the National High School Hall of Fame yesterday. Indiana football snags their first 2020 recruit in Ty Wise, a linebacker from Carmel. Big night for Indiana basketball as the women's team started it off with a huge win, 66-58 over Minnesota. Allie Patberg led the way with 20 points. Brenna Wise not far behind at 19. They get a rematch with Iowa tonight at 6.30 in the next round of the Big Ten Tournament. Men's team wins 92-74 at Illinois last night. Juwan Morgan led the way with 20 points and 9 rebounds in what was a balanced scoring effort for the Hoosiers. They play the Rutgers on Sunday at noon in the regular season finale. And in other Big Ten action last night, Wisconsin destroys Iowa 65-45. Those are a look at your daily Hoosier headlines on this 8th day of March 2019. For more information, make sure to check out the Daily Hoosier.com. So, loaded show for you all today. As I said, uh, certainly a lot to talk about, as you heard there from the headlines. Uh, hit me up on the text line 502 414 1450. That number that I could see today, 502 414 1450, the text line. Going to need all the help I can get for this first hour or so as we. Try to break down what was a huge night in sports. Uh, Damon Bailey inducted to the National High School Hall of Fame. I'll talk to Justin Soakland about that. He's well-connected up in that area. Um, Of course, we're going to talk with Sammy Jacobs about Indiana football, how the spring practices have been going, and, of course, 2020 recruit in Ty Wise, the second straight recruiting class that Indiana has snagged a kid out of Carmel. So doing something right when you're able to able to keep in-state talent guys from Carmel to go to Indiana. And then, of course, the basketball teams. Where do we start? Do we start with the women? Do we start with the men? Uh, The men, we're going to give all kinds of love today because they played absolutely phenomenal. So we'll jump in with the women first uh, as they took down Minnesota last night. As I said, that score was 66-58. But to be quite honest with you, it really wasn't all that close. I was watching... A majority of that game, at least in the first half, uh, until the men's game came on. But it was Indiana absolutely destroying. I think it was 42-28 to or something at half. They were unbelievable in that first half of play. They were clicking on all cylinders. And I briefly mentioned the balance scoring for the men. Not the case with the women. I mentioned the 20 points for Allie Patberg. Brenna Wise had the 19. Then you had 11 points from Jalen Penn. Nobody else had over four. Kim Royster, Ben Duyaney, Grace Berger, all of them with four points last night. So Indiana women certainly taking their one, two, three players and making it happen last night over a big win over Minnesota. Going to be interesting to see if they're able to come back and knock off Iowa once again, the number 10 team in the country. Uh, they did a couple weeks ago, so you never know. Big 10 tournament up in Indy tonight. That game scheduled for 6.30 p.m. Uh, Joker texted one player of the game award today. Let's hear it, Joker. Let's hear it. Yeah, turning our attention to the men, what an impressive win that was for them last night. Uh, There's all kinds of stats that can be thrown out from that game last night. Uh, The one thing that really impressed me, though, and we talked about it on yesterday's show quite extensively, is the fact that Indiana had to take care of the basketball. Seven turnovers last night seven I would say that is taking care of the basketball between Rob Fennessy and Devontae Green they had 11 assists 
between the two of them, zero turnovers. If you would have told me that stat going into the game, that that was going to be the case last night, that's probably about the game that I would have expected. Indiana nearly wins by 20. I mean, that is a heck of a stat. When you're able to control the ball and keep it in your possession while dishing and finding your teammates, that's that's an unbelievable asset to a team. And that's what we saw last night from not only Rob Fennessy, but Devontae Green as well. Now, Fennessy more polished in terms of offensive output last night, but you look at the scoring from last night for this Indiana game, unbelievable balance in the game. Jawan Morgan, I mentioned, he led the way with 20 points. And right behind him, you had Fennessy, who I want to talk about Fennessy a lot today. Give me three more years of Rob Fennessy, please. 17 points for Rob last night. Justin Smith with a pretty decent game, 7 of 12 shooting, 15 points. So seems like Justin Smith has found his rhythm as of late. And you had Devontae Green with his 11 points. And then Romeo, 10. Romeo is the fifth leading scorer on the team last night. And Indiana wins by 20. 18 technically, but what a, what a game last night all around from the whole team. They're certainly clicking on the right cylinders right now. And Archie actually talked about that after the game. We'll hear from Archie. I've got some player sound for you as well. We'll take a listen to all that as the show goes on today. But like I said, loaded program. Sammy Jacobs, Justin Soakland will be on in the first hour. Drew Davis to talk high school sports as well as Indiana at 720. Todd Leary on at 740. And a lot of high school basketball action this weekend as the regionals set to get underway. Uh, There's a number of really good teams competing for that regional championship with an opportunity to move on into the state tournament. As Joker texted into the show, Bubba's 33 player of the game goes to the team which was excellent as the food and service that you will get at Bubba's 33 on your dining experience. I love it, Joker. I do. I love it. Not only will you get great service at Bubba's 33 and a smile from your server, but that's what you got from Indiana last night. Excellent game. Just absolutely excellent. I don't know what you all were thinking going into that game last night, but that was not the game that I was expecting. I'd be lying if I told you anything otherwise. I was thinking 52-42, which was our halftime score, by the way. Halftime score, 52-42. I was thinking that might be similar to our final score at the conclusion of that ball game last night. But no, Indiana's able to get into the 90s. Thanks, Illinois pressure defense. And I want to talk about that as well. The, The pressure defense from Illinois... When it comes to this Indiana team, and we've now seen Indiana beat Illinois twice this season, so they are the number nine seed or number ten seed in the Big Ten as of right now. We'll break down all that as well. I've, I've got that handy. Um, but ninety-two points against Illinois last night, and and their offense when Illinois press, pressures defensively the way they do, Indiana's got two options: they can force a three from outside maybe take their time to find a couple open threes or they can find the driving lanes and get to the rack. Which scenario have you seen Indiana have more success this season? Shooting threes from deep or driving to the rack? Bingo. I don't even need to answer that for you. If Indiana can find the spaces on the floor, find those driving lanes and get the ball to the hoop, they can be a really, really dangerous team. And I think that's what you saw last night. Now, do I think Illinois is a juggernaut? Absolutely not. They're 11 and 19 on the year, now 7 and 12 in conference play. Ironically, the exact same record as Indiana in conference play. So Indiana can play that way, night in and night out. They may win their two games in the Big Ten tournament. Shoot, they may even get three. But regardless, sitting at 16 and 14, winners of three straight games, two of those coming against ranked opponents, 
getting closer to saying it's it's a safe bet that Indiana might get into the tournament. I don't know that with the propensity that we've seen for them playing good basketball this season that it's a team you can keep out. But we'll see. I mean, it's we've still got a couple of weeks. We've got the Big Ten tournament next week. Um, and, and you certainly never know how those things are going to play out. Indiana comes regardless whether they're playing on Wednesday or Thursday, which at this point you'd have to think Indiana will be playing on Thursday. Regardless what happens, Indiana cannot lose that first game. They lose that first game, then it's a little dicey. Even the second game. I think if they lose the second game, a little sketchy. little sketchy. So we'll certainly pay attention to that. Uh, see what happens. As it's going to be interesting going down the stretch. I mean, this is a team that should and could get into the tournament. And if they continue to play the way they have, especially getting five guys in double figures scoring. And I didn't even talk about Deron Davis, who finished with nine points. So you basically got six guys finishing in double figures and just what was an all-around effort last night. Mentioned the seven turnovers, 17 assists, seven turnovers. Over a two-to-one assist-to-turnover ratio. That's how you win ball games, folks. That is how you win ball games. Hey, hit us up on the text line, 502-414-1450, just like Joker has done a couple times here this morning. Jim Coyle headed to North Carolina to deal with some personal matters, but we will have him on, oh, about 6.47 o'clock this morning. As it's not a, a Friday here on the Indiana Sports Beat without Jim Coyle interviewing Todd Leary. And if you haven't heard that in the past, make sure you stick around. That Todd Leary interview is always a fun one on Fridays, especially when it comes after a win. So going to be interested to hear Todd's take. See what he thinks about the game last night. I know he's been, at times this season, extremely frustrated with this basketball team, and rightfully so. I mean, they've had a number of games where you haven't enjoyed watching. Out of their 30 games this year, I'd venture to say that you've you've probably only enjoyed watching about half of them. Maybe, maybe close to 20. I mean, fact of the matter is, it's not a fun team to watch. It hasn't been. I should say that. Because they turned it around after that Purdue game or the Iowa game. Whichever one of those came first. And yeah, they lost that Purdue game. Yeah, they lost that Iowa game. But you were there. You were competitive. That was the start of the turnaround. We hadn't seen Indiana compete in ball games. That was the start of it. Way back a couple weeks ago. And then it's been doing nothing but winning since. You you beat Wisconsin. You beat Michigan. You destroy Illinois last night. I'm hesitant to bring it up. But is this typical Archie Miller fashion? We saw his teams at Dayton seemingly every year find their groove in February, find their groove in March, get into the big tent or the big dance somehow, make a run to the Sweet 16. But that was with Dayton. Imagine what he could do with Indiana if he gets his team clicking on all cylinders, which the past couple of weeks, that's how it seems like it's been. So certainly have enjoyed watching this team as of late, and I'm glad that was a turnaround because I was not enjoying them early on. Another text into the show, Bill Text did, says this team is much more efficient on the offensive end with a healthy Rob Fennessy at the point. He directs the offense like a conductor directs his orchestra. Yeah, and I agree. And Rob Fennessy last night, thanks for the text, Bill, um, was unbelievable. And I talked about it on yesterday's show briefly that I believe Rob Fennessy is the X factor on this team, or I, I think Joker may have even brought it up yesterday. But yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, he is. He is absolutely the X factor on this team. And when he plays like he played last night, controlling the offense, uh, getting everybody in position, it's a tough team to beat. A tough team to beat. It makes you think, what would this season have been like 
had it not been derailed by the Rob Fennessy concussion. That's what I found myself thinking about last night. If Rob Fennessy doesn't miss two, three weeks, close to a month, whatever it was, where is this Indiana team sitting now? I can tell you they certainly don't lose 12 of 13 games with a healthy Rob Fennessy. They don't. Rob Fennessy is is a phenomenal talent, and he has shown that multiple times this season. To come into the D1 level and play basketball the way he has played as a freshman, that's impressive. Real impressive. And I've enjoyed watching it. That's why I, I kind of shouted at the beginning of the show, give me three years of Rob Fennessy. See what happens if Rob Fennessy stays another three years at Indiana. Don't imagine there's going to be too many Big Ten teams that want to see Rob Fennessy at Indiana for three more years. That's just a fact of the matter. But overall, great game last night for the Hoosiers. Final score one more time, 92-74. They get a much-needed win at Illinois, and they've got one win le- or one game left against Rutgers on senior night or senior day, that game at noon on Sunday as Indiana says their final goodbyes to Juwan Morgan, Zach McRoberts, Johnny Jager is out the door as well. Evan Fitzner, another guy who will be exiting the program, so – Get to Assembly Hall. If you don't have tickets, see if you can't buy any. Get there for that Rutgers game on Saturday. Pack out the hall. And see if they can't end this season with a four-game winning streak in the regular season heading into Big Ten play or Big Ten tournament play, I should say. What a boost that would be. So, got to get to a break here. We will be back with Sammy Jacobs from the Hoosier Huddle. After the break, stay with us. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat, and we will be back right after this break. I know I ought to save it, but it's burning a hole. Right through my pocket and into my skin. Come Monday morning, I'll be broke again. It's Friday, Friday, I'm free again. I've got my morning. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, Located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway, Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you could fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch specials. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. 
All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. And welcome back here into Indiana Sports Beat on this Friday. March 8th, 2019. Joined now by Sammy Jacobs from the Hoosier Huddle. Sammy, how are you today? I'm doing excellent. It's Friday. Uh, you know, it's spring ball's going on. No complaint. Absolutely. Spring ball, that's that's what we're here for. Uh, spring ball, I want to talk to you about spring ball. Uh, the media has been available to go to Indiana practices, Indiana media availability frequently this year it's a new thing that the indiana program is trying to do have you been able to make it to any football practices this spring yet yeah i was down on on tuesday morning and then i had one of my writers nate cop was down on sunday uh, yesterday's practice was way too early i think it was before 6, 6 a.m uh, so to make it down from indy uh, before that is uh, impossible but um you know, they've done a, a really good job of opening up things, and I think that's a lot of things that, that college football programs have to look at uh, and, and kind of do because that's how you grow the sport and share the stories of its players and coaches is you let uh, media come in and, and watch and, and talk to players and coaches. Yeah, and especially with a program like Indiana who's – they're still, it seems like trying to find footing, and that's been the case for years and years and years. But heading to that spring practice earlier this week, Sammy, what was your initial reactions of where this team was last year versus where you think they could be this year? Um, it, it looks like they've grown up a lot, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, it, you know, watching the team stuff, it, it really looks like they're playing with 12 defenders out there. Guys are faster. You know, bigger, faster, and stronger. They understand the defense much better, so they're moving. You know, they're moving without thinking too much, and they're not overthinking. And have just it's become second nature. Okay, this is where the ball's going. This is where I have to be. Instead of having to, to process, okay, this guy is here, and you know that always makes you a step faster uh, in in anything you do. Now it's easy to say that the offense should be the unit that improves more off of last year. Uh, Is it that simple? Is the offense going to be the unit in terms of offense, defense, that makes the bigger strides in this spring session heading into next year? Well, it depends on how you, you know, grade growth. There's probably more room for improvement on offense than there will be on defense. Uh, And if, you know, so that's just naturally going to be, well, you can say there's more improvement on offense. Uh, but the defense has a lot of room to improve as well. Uh, they have they have the, the luxury of being under, uh, you know, the same coaching staff for a couple of years with Kalen DeBoer coming in on the offensive side. 
Uh, there still might be a growing period where they need a couple games to, to get the offense under their belts and, and move forward. Yeah, and that's a good point defensively. I mean, they have had the same coaching staff, and not only has the defensive unit had that same coaching staff, a number of those guys, if not all of them, have been in the defensive system for at least a couple of years now. A lot of returning guys in that defense. How good can they be heading into next season? I think they could be much better than they were last year in terms of, you know, turnover luck is something you really can't control. Now, if a quarterback's going to throw you the ball, you've got to catch it on defense. But, you know, if, if you punch a ball out and it bounces right back to the other team uh, instead of to you, that's really something you can't, re- you can't control. Uh, so Indiana forced a lot of takeaways last year. I believe the number was 26. And if you keep on that pace, yeah, this defense could be much, much better. Uh, if, if it takes a step back in the takeaways, then, you know, maybe some of the numbers don't improve as, as much. But this defense, it's moving faster, it's moving freer, uh, and, you know, the talent is there to uh, to have some improvement, especially in the points per game and, and things like that. Yeah, and I know Tom Allen has said a number of times this off season, and he's been pretty adamant that, he wants this defense to be a top 25 defense in the country. Is that something they're capable of, Sammy? Maybe not right now, but could you see that being the case in the regular season? Yeah, they could but they, they could be a top 25 defense um, in some categories. Maybe total defense is one of them as well. Um, it just depends what category you're grading them by. Uh, but they – I mean, they were very close to being that top 25 defense last year. Yeah. And if, if, if they do improve like we think they will, they should crack that top 25. Absolutely. And it's the offense, I agree, that has the more room to improve. So that'll be interesting to watch uh, as this spring goes on and as the regular season inches closer. Turn our attention now to the 2020 class. Indiana got their first recruit for that class yesterday in Ty Wise, a linebacker from Carmel. What do you know about Ty Wise? You know, it's a nice pickup from a a good program in Indianapolis uh, in in Carmel High School. Uh, He's a guy who's kind of been under-recruited right now um, and may start to blow up soon now that he's committed to to Indiana. But he's, um, he's, he's got good athleticism. He's always making plays. Uh, he, he's got some things to improve, but he's a he's a linebacker that could uh, that Hoosier fans could see, you know, in the regular rotation for years to come. Yeah, and you mentioned a good program in Indy and Carmel. Uh, they got Bo Robbins coming in this year from Carmel, so making some headway. And up in northern Indy, as I agree, Ty Wise a good a good signee. Uh, he said he's a hundred percent committed to Indiana. Does, do you get skeptical about that when guys say that and they've still got two years of high school left? You know, kids will be kids um, and dealing with 17-year-olds in their future. And I, I don't think Sammy? May have lost him. And you there, Sammy? And lost Sammy, so see if he calls back here in a minute. But thanks to Sammy for joining us in case he does not call back. I know he's got uh, – he's a he's a gym teacher, so he's headed to school right now. So perhaps getting into the school. But, yeah, good stuff there from Sammy. Uh, Ty Wise, a, a 2020 recruit. I mentioned the first recruit for Indiana in that class, a linebacker from Carmel. You heard Sammy talk about a little under-recruited at this point, so maybe he thought it was the right time to to jump ship and, and hop with a program. So right now that's Indiana, uh, 100% committed. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, I, I asked Sammy that question if he gets skeptical about a guy committing, as looks like Sammy's calling back now as we'll get him back on. Sammy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I got you, yep. Yeah, so um, I don't know how much uh, of that you got, uh, but talking about being 100% committed, 
you know, college coaches are not going to back off uh, if you're a good player just because you said you're 100% committed to a place. Right. So you're, you're also dealing with, you know, 17, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. And, you know, a change of mind, well, it would be surprising, uh, wouldn't be shocking because yeah. that's, you know, that's what happens. Um, so I, I think he's a pretty solid 2IU. Getting him early um, shouldn't be a big deal. But you're you're still going to have to recruit him and um, keep him at IU. You can't just say, oh, he's locked up, let's move on to the next guy and, and not check in with him because that's how you lose, lose commitment. Absolutely. And how does getting a kid like that, uh, we mentioned 2020 recruit, uh, he's from Carmel. Is that an advantage for Indiana moving forward, the fact that they've already got a commit for that class and they can now – start attacking guys around him, maybe guys he's close with. Uh, and I know on the basketball side, we've seen Indiana go after Keon Brooks because he's close with Trace Jackson Davis. Is it a similar situation with football, or is there just too many guys to to try to pick out who's friends and who's not? Um, it's uh, it, There are a lot of guys, but usually, you know, coaching staffs going into a recruiting cycle have a plan of what positions they want, you don't want to attack based on graduation numbers and things like that. Um, so while you don't really build a class around somebody, uh, there are several pieces you could build around, and, and uh, Ty Wise is, is one of them. And there's another Carmel uh, defensive lineman who's a I think a high four star, uh, and Cole Beverd, and you could just like. Uh, Trice and, and Keon, you hope that connection to Carl, Carmel with, you know, Bo Robbins and and Ty Wise helps you a little bit uh, getting some of these bigger guys that that Clemson and Alabama, Alabama's are going after and, and to give IU a shot. Absolutely, Sammy. We'll see how it plays out, but I want to thank you for joining me this morning. A lot of good information there catching up on Indiana spring football. Thanks, Sammy. Have a great day, man. Thanks, Justin. You too. Sammy Jacobs there talk from Hoosier Huddle talking about Indiana football and the progress they have made in the spring as well as some recruiting they have gone through. Uh, we're going to go ahead and step aside for another break. We have got Justin Soakland coming up, talk some high school basketball with the regionals starting this weekend. Uh, we'll get in depth on that Seymour Regional, as well as any other games that might be coming up around the state. Stick with us. You're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Right here. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway, Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. 
The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day, or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you could fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch special. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. And welcome back here into Indiana Sports Beat on this Friday, March 8th, 2019, as we're joined now by Justin Soakland, a guy who knows a lot about the Indiana high school basketball scene. Uh, Justin has spent some time at the Courier Journal. Uh, Justin, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, what all have you done in terms of writing? I know you've worked for a number of of different publications. Uh, how, and how'd you get started in all that? Uh, well, it's it, it, that's a long, uh, sorry story. But I started in 1986 at the Bedford Times Mail and got thrown right into the mix of the Damon Bailey era. Uh, right off the top, and uh, enjoyed that. I uh, was there until 2004. I was at the Courier Journal until uh, covered in Southern Indiana until 2016, and now I've got my own thing where I'm uh, covering B- uh, BNL Athletics at Bedford North Lawrence. It's called BNLAthletics.com, and I'm enjoy doing that because that keeps me pretty busy. Excellent, Ed. Well, perfect time to have you along then because there's a lot of news coming out of Bedford the past couple of days. Uh, none more important than Damon Bailey inducted into the National High School Hall of Fame. And if you've seen that list of the people he was inducted into that Hall of Fame with, quite an impressive group of people there, Justin. He's pretty excited because he grew up a, a, a Los Angeles Dodgers fan, so he was excited to beat Dusty Baker. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I told him, I said, no, I grew up a Reds fan. That was always the enemy. But, you know, <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way it goes. But yeah, he's he's. A, I mean, no, you cannot think of a person more deserving than the accolades that Damon has gotten over the years. And and then he kind of joked, yeah, it just means you're getting old and you get inducted all these halls of fame. But uh, I mean, he is he he is kind of the legend uh, in my era of Indiana high school basketball and Indiana basketball in general. I mean, I was when I was first starting, everybody told me about Oscar Robertson, you know how good he was, and and you, when you put him and Damon and a few of the people that have come along in my lifetime. Uh, there's just been no one better, especially to represent uh, the state of Indiana. Uh, he's just a just a quality person as well as one of the most amazing basketball players I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. And his scoring record still stands up. Maybe should have gotten beat last year by Romeo. Had a couple of off games, but how much longer do you think that record stands, Justin? There's a number of guys hot on his tail that if they continue to average 25, 30 points a game, they're going to catch him. Do you see that record falling fairly soon? Well, I don't know because you got to remember he had, he had an unbelievable freshman campaign, 
and everybody since then has had to catch up because they don't they didn't have the points that he did as a freshman. He averaged 25 points a game as a freshman. That was amazing. He was all state in in the single class era as a freshman. And so you know you, you're playing catch up always from behind with him because if you're trying to catch him, Romeo got close uh, before him. To, Deshaun Thomas got close, uh, very close, and, and they got beaten in a regional game his senior year, or he might have gotten it. But I mean, and here's the, the point: Damon doesn't care. <laughs> you know, it's, it's only important to all of us guys. You talk about it in the media. Right. He could care less. And I saw him play every game of his career. And if he wanted to, he could have scored a ton of more points if he were selfish. But there were points in games where you know he didn't need to score; they were ahead, and he made sure he, his teammates got involved and, and got some of the attention and the glory as well. So he could have scored uh, who knows how many points. But the point is, uh, you know, I hear about this Luke Brown at, at Blackford and, and the, the, the latest Blackman at Marion, and, and good luck to them. But uh, I don't know; it'll be close because they not only do you have to score a lot of points, your teams have to have deep tournament runs because you have to play the maximum amount of games. Uh, Bedford North Lawrence uh, in Damon's era played almost the the exact number of maximum games you could play. If they hadn't got beaten the regional by Floyd Central uh, his junior his, uh, his junior year, they they would have almost played the, the maximum amount. And so you've got to have that for you too. You've got to go deep in the tournament every year. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because I've always heard that about Damon, the fact that he doesn't really care about the scoring record. Yeah, it may have been cool back then when he had it, but now it's like, good luck to you kids. Uh, one other piece of Bedford news, of course, we can't forget Jory Allen, uh, girls basketball player over there at Bedford. She was put on to the Indiana All-Star team, right? Oh, absolutely. One of the 13 that was named yesterday for the Indiana All-Star team. And, again, an outstanding kid. And no one more deserving. And she's uh, one of the probably going to be one of the finalists for Miss Basketball, and has an excellent chance to win it. And uh, and you know, of course, down here we hope she does. She's going to Indiana University, yeah. and she is going to be a, an amazing player. She no matter what number she wears on the All Star team, uh, she's going to be one of the important pieces as Indiana goes after uh, Kentucky in the two game series in June. Yeah, and that's why I bring her up because she is going to Indiana University, so she will be heading to play for head coach Terry Moore in this year, a team who's really got it rolling right now. But let's go ahead and turn our attention to high school basketball. We've got regionals starting this weekend. Uh, a lot of really good games lined up across the state. We've got a number of local teams that are trying to get regional championships. But none more big or more exciting, and I know because I was there last year, than that Seymour Regional and, and their huge gym. Well, that is, you know, it depends on who you talk to now. Uh, Newcastle used to claim the biggest gym in the in the world for high schools, and then everybody's done some recounting, and maybe now Seymour's taking that title. I don't know, but it's one of the most amazing arenas when it's full. I mean, it's a huge barn, and when you get there and it's packed, and uh, as you saw last year with with Romeo being there, and when I was, you know, when being able with Damon, it was always full, and 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 I think on Saturday it, there's going to be an amazing crowd because a couple of those scenes really travel. When it gets pulled up and it gets loud, it's one of the most fun places to be to watch a high school game that, that I've been in. It's it's an amazing place. And there, there's going to be some really good games there on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Any What what are the games are you looking forward to the most out of the two that will be played? Well, the first game, I mean, Jasper, uh, they're 16-9, and nine, and their record doesn't indicate that, that, uh, that they're going to be able to compete with Center Grove because Center Grove, we're talking about, you know, Tracy Jackson Davis. Well, uh, McDonald's All-American, one of the best players in the state, maybe Mr. Basketball here, and when they announced that. Uh, Center Grove, I would say, would be the uh, favorite in that. But the most intriguing game to me is going to be the Bloomington-South-Jeffersonville matchup. Those are two teams that, that I've seen uh, you know several times this year, and it, it's, it should be right down to the wire. You're talking two teams that are very, very equal in terms of ability. Uh, you, you've got Bloomington South with uh, Anthony Leal, the junior, averaging about 21 points a game. And he's going to go somewhere in Division One uh, when he makes his announcement. They've got four kids averaging double figures, and, of course, they've got the old guy on the bench there who's won, what, 900, 1,000 games now. I've, I've lost track. <laughs> but uh, J.R. J.R. Holmes, you know, the best, uh, the most winningest coach in the history of the state of Indiana now. I think he's got 809 wins actually now. So, you know, you, it's hard to bet against them. But Jeffersonville, uh, the way they played in the sectional, I was really impressed. They are on a roll. They've, they're 19-5. They've won 10 in a row. And, and you know, they got Trey Coleman yesterday, who's going to be a Division One player somewhere. But to me, the team, the guy that really impressed me in the sectional was, was the point guard, uh, Jacob Jones. He played phenomenally. Uh, he had uh, 21 against BNL and hit eight of nine shots. He had 19 against New Albany. 
and he's averaging about seven and a half assists. And if he plays well, Jeffersonville is really dangerous. That ought to be a very good game in, in that semifinal. Yeah, and J- Jones hit a lot of threes in that sectional as well. A lot of fun to watch. I, too, have seen both of those teams. Both teams are really good. I think that game should be a lot of fun. And, Justin, I can't believe you're not excited about Center Grove Jasper uh, when Center Grove won their sectional 29-28. to That's a fun game. <laughs> well, you know, I am anti-shot clock. But, it's, but <laughs> didn't you see that game and you go, oh, somebody saw it. Yeah, it was – it was a center grove opponent, but you know what? That's part of the game. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, it, you know, the team sports are built around not only individual talent but strategy, and and that's just part of the game. And, and uh, you know, if you can't win those games, then I'm sorry, but I every, I don't want to see them every night, but every once in a while, it, it's intriguing to see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and one other team you talked about briefly before we came on today, Silver Creek, uh, as they will try to. They've really got Indiana State aspirations in, in that 3A class. What do you know about Silver Creek with them moving forward to regionals this weekend? Well, they should have aspirations at a state title because they have the talent to do it. I mean, they're 21-3. and three. Uh, they've, they've had a remarkable run here as far as sectional success here recently with, with the, under Coach Brandon Hoffman, who I really respect. Uh, this may be their most talented team that I've seen. They, I saw them play against you know, BNL. Uh, in in mid year and uh, they looked very good and uh, they've got a lot of talent they got uh, you know a veteran point guard they've got a, a young sophomore six eight kid who's really good and going to be great when he, before he's done and I think you know usually here in, in recent years they've won the sectional and they run into some trouble in the, in the regional team that they just couldn't handle athletically but this team is built to handle that and looking at who they've gotten in their regional in Southridge was. Evans of Memorial, Batesville, and Princeton, who I understand is a very good team. But I think Silver Creek has got an excellent chance to get through there. And then after that, you know, you've only got two games to win the whole thing. And, and uh, I've seen Attics play in that, in that Greencastle uh, regional in 3A, and, and they're very talented. Uh, Greencastle, you know, historically very good. But I think, after, you know, if they get through this regional, they should have a chance until they see Delta probably in the final. I mean, who knows? But, but they, if they get through this regional, they've got an excellent chance. Yeah, Delta, an undefeated team in Indiana, one of the better teams in that 3A class. One more topic to touch on here. We're talking to Justin Soakland, uh, former Bedford girls coach, now at Butler, named Big East Coach of the Year. Uh, the name's escaping me, Justin. Kurt Godlewski, you know, go. one of the class one of the class guys that we've, we've ever had around here. He coached the girls team for, I believe, seven years. Uh, took them to the undefeated state championship in 2013 before he left to go to become an assistant at Butler. And as circumstances uh, unfolded, uh, his second year there, uh, there was an opening, and they named him the interim coach, and then they kept him. And uh, now he stole Damon Bailey away from BNL his first year because he hired Damon as an assistant. <laughs> and, and Damon was there for a few years before coming back to, to BNL uh, to manage his business and, and then to help out the boys' team now. But uh, one of the class individuals that you'll ever run across, and I'm really excited for him for the success that the Butler women have had. They went 15 and one to start the year, I believe. You know, he had two or three years there where they struggled, but he's got some some uh, you know good talent now, including the, the Tory Schickel, who's from Evansville, uh, one of the better players in, in the in the Big East Conference, and uh, they've made quite an improvement this year. And I, I'm really happy for him because you don't find a better person than Kurt Gudlewski. Yeah, I agree, and and. Absolutely cool stuff that he he went to Butler to have success after being at the high school level. One other thing I want to touch on is you mentioned Damon Bailey back at Bedford now uh, helping out with the boys team. How fun is that, and how how much does he get out of that coaching with or coaching his son every day? Well, he, it's it's a source of pride. I mean, he doesn't talk a lot about it, but if you could tell. I mean, he's he's really happy to see that his son Brayton is is having success. The, the, the comparisons to compare Brayton to Damon are very, very unfair because, you know, no one's going to be able to stand up to that, especially his son. But I tell you what, Brayton has handled it extremely well. He doesn't care, you know, about the, the conversations or the comparisons. He just plays his game, and, and he's a good player in his own right. I, I think Damon enjoys it. I mean, he's, he's told me more than once that what he wants to do is he wants to show up to practice and games and coach, and he enjoys that immensely. Now, the rest of the stuff that coaches have to deal with you know, talking to us in the media and the parents and all that other stuff, he didn't like to deal with that too much. But he really loves coaching kids, and, and he's very good at it. He, he took over the B&L girls program for one year after uh, Kurt left and won the state championship as well. So, so he's, a, he's a very, very smart basketball player, as you saw when he was playing, and he's a very
very, very smart coach because he really looks at picking out the matchups and, and ex- looking and seeing what he can exploit with his with his team. And and they they do a really good job, and I think he really enjoys it. And I and I'm glad that he's got something like you know after basketball, you know, a lot of times stars like that when they're when their star fades, you know, they they struggle with what to do. He's never done that. He's got he's got a business here in town, and of course he's been involved in coaching. And uh, and uh, we're glad he's still here. Absolutely. Good stuff. Justin Soakland, former writer for the Courier Journal. Thanks a lot for joining us here on more, or on Indiana Sports Beat this morning. A lot of good information in terms of high school basketball and athletics. All right. Anytime. I appreciate the time. All right. That was Justin Soakland. Thanks to him for joining us on some with some really good information. Uh, talking about Indiana High School Regionals this upcoming weekend. Uh, Damon Bailey, of course, inducted into the National High School Hall of Fame. And I want to try to pull that list up of the other people he was inducted with. We mentioned Dusty Baker. Um, There was a number of guys. Let me see if I can't get that pulled up real quick. But, yeah, good stuff there. Jory Allen, of course, the Indiana commit. She will be heading to Indiana next year. Uh, Indiana All-Star this year, one of the 13 players. So pretty cool there. Uh, we'll, We'll have to pay attention to see if she doesn't bring home Indiana misses basketball, as that should be a pretty close battle. There's a number of really good girls players within the state. But, yeah, I'll see if I can't get that list pulled up. Jim should be on right about 7.04, 7.05 here next segment as we continue along here on this Friday. A Friday after a game day edition, 92.74, Tim text into the show. Uh, asks if I can say that score again. Who would have thought that? Go Rob Fennessy, go Hoosiers. 92-74, Tim. 92-74. Um, also, Tim says, wonder if Brooks makes the Rutgers game. Uh, interesting question there, Tim. I'll be interested to see if that's how that pans out as well. Uh, if, if Keon Brooks is at the Rutgers game, you've got to like Indiana's odds, but I don't know. This whole Keon Brooks thing just seems like it's slipping away. I, I said earlier this week I thought it was a coin flip. Then I saw a couple of reports yesterday that uh, maybe it is Kentucky. So we'll see. I'm, I'm trying not to think about it too much. Uh, just let it happen. Let the kid make his decision. One week from today, by the way, is when Keon will be making his decision. So certainly something to pay attention to there. JR text then says, who is IU projected to play in the first round? Uh, let me see here, JR. See if I can't pull up some standings. I know Indiana with a win. Let me see if I can't find that stat that I, I was reading yesterday or late last night. Indiana has an opportunity to be all the way up, go all the way up to the eight seed. Uh, so they need to win on Sunday. And Wisconsin needs to win against Ohio State, which seems pretty likely. And then an Illinois win versus Penn State, that would give Indiana the eight seed in the Big Ten tournament. And if that's the case, they're going to play either, you would think, Rutgers or Illinois, depending on who finishes in that nine spot. Or it could be Ohio State as well. It's really tough to tell at this point, JR. There's still one more game to play out. Uh, we're going we're gonna to let it see what happens here. Uh, Indiana could be the nine seed. All they got to do is win. Ohio State has to beat Wisconsin and Penn State win, so that's not likely. Uh, they are a number 10 seed with a loss and a Penn State win, and they are a number 11 seed with a loss and an Illinois win. So what it, what it comes down to for Indiana, unless you're Jim Coyle and you want to see him play on that Wednesday to try to get another easy win, all you got to do is win on Sunday against Rutgers. That's it. That is it. So that will be the final game of the year. Uh, you win that game, you're you're at least playing on the second day of the Big Ten tournament. Now, I get it. That, that doesn't lend itself to an easy win. But at this point, the way Indiana's playing, why do you need easy wins? Give them, give them two tough games. Let them, let them win two tough games. Make sure they get that foot in the door in terms of the NCAA tournament. If you want to guarantee that to be the case – Give them two harder games. Give them a, give them an Iowa. Give them a. I don't, I don't want to consider Ohio State a hard game, but Ohio State is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want Ohio State or not. But anyways, 
Indiana has got to win two games in the Big Ten tournament. We'll see if that pans out or not. Uh, if it does, you've got to think they're in the tournament. So we'll be interested to watch how it all plays out. They've got Rutgers on Saturday after a big 92-74 win last night against Illinois, which Jawan Morgan led the way. Like I said, 20 points, 9 rebounds. So that's going to get us to another break here on Indiana Sports Beat. Stick with us. We'll be back with more right after this break. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you could fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch specials. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knobs. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Well, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country sound. We'll all be flying higher than a jet. 
Well, welcome along, and thanks a lot for joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat on this Friday, March 8th. Appreciate you joining us. Take us along wherever you're going, whatever you may be doing. Thanks a lot for taking Indiana Sports Speed with you. Jim Coyle with you, as always. Of course, Justin Kalen high atop the crew chief's box. That's right. Man in the box in the first hour for us as I was traveling and uh, arrived here in North Carolina. Hope that uh, everyone's week went well and they're ready for the weekend. A lot of stuff to get to, a lot of stuff to talk about from last night and coming up this weekend. None bigger than uh, Indiana basketball right now, both men's and women's. Uh, we'll get to all of that on the program today, Todd Leary will be with us. Drew Davis will be with us. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Before we get to all that, let's get to the headlines with Justin. All right, here are your headlines, your daily Hoosier headlines for this eighth day of March 2019. Damon Bailey inducted into the National High School Hall of Fame. Indiana football snags its first 2020 recruit in Ty Wise, a linebacker from Carmel. Big night for Indiana basketball as the women's team started it off with a huge win 66-58 over Minnesota in a game that really wasn't that close. Allie Patberg led the way with 20 points. Brenna Wise added 19 as Indiana gets a rematch with Iowa tonight at 6.30. The men's team wins 92-74 at Illinois last night. Jawan Morgan led the way with 20 points and 9 rebounds. They conclude their regular season at, against Rutgers at Assembly Hall on Sunday at noon. And another Big Ten action last night. Wisconsin destroys Iowa 65-45. to Those are a look at your Daily Hoosier headlines for this eighth day of March 2019. For more information, make sure to check out thedailyhoosier.com. And lots uh, to get to today. Uh, the, the, the Indiana softball team, I know we don't talk a lot about softball, but, man, they're killing it this year. They're, they're in action today as well. The women's team, women's basketball program, the Big Ten tournament is underway. They won their first game yesterday, as uh, Justin mentioned, knocking off Minnesota, a team that had beat them during the regular season. Indiana playing very well right now, uh, both sides, men's and the women's, but the women's team is playing very well. They're playing very very good team basketball right now, and they're a dangerous team in this tournament. I'm not saying they're going to win it, but they're a dangerous out. Um, they have to play Iowa next. I don't know that Iowa wants to play them. They've already lost Indiana once, and, Indiana, and Iowa's a good team, a really good team. Um, but you don't want to get a hold of a team that's uh, kind of on an uptick, and Indiana is definitely on an uptick. Congratulations. Good luck to them today as they uh, play again. Did you say that game's at 630 today? 630, yep, same time as yesterday. 6.30 up in Indianapolis, if you can get a chance to go up and watch that. So uh, good luck to the to the ladies as uh, they uh, continue the Big Ten tournament action. Justin mentioned that Damon Bailey inducted into the National High School Hall of Fame. That's a m big deal. Yeah, huge. Um, not only did you, you – I heard you talking about the guys that went in with him, but if you look, how many – Indiana has produced so much talent, it's nuts. We all know this. I mean, they, they, they put more people in the NBA. They've got more All-Americans, more guy, more people in per capita and playing Division One basketball than any place else. It's nuts. But it, the National High School Hall of Fame, that's a select group. I think there's only like 20 maybe forever from Indiana that's in it. I, I don't even know the number. But it's, it, it's a very, very select group. And obviously, if you're going in with people like Dusty Baker, that's a pretty, pretty big, uh, pretty big crowd you're, you're bumping with there. And uh, Derek but, Brooks and Simone Augustus were the others. Wow! Congratulations yeah. to all of those guys. It's a great, great uh, acknowledgement for them. Also, I, I know you mentioned, but I'll mention it again. Former Bedford North Lawrence women's coach Kurt, I don't know how you say his name, Glevsky. God Glevsky, uh, I think. You used to be at uh, Bedford's coach, of course. Now he moved on to coach at Butler. Uh, went up there as an assistant and then got the head job. Well, now he just named Big East Coach of the Year uh, for Butler. So congratulations there as well. And then a lot going on this weekend. We'll talk about high school basketball, the IHSA. Uh, regionals are underway. Uh, we'll talk to Drew Davis a little bit about that. I know J Justin Soakland was on earlier. Great Man, you talk about no one better to talk about it than, than him. But uh, a lot of teams in action this weekend, uh, Silver Creek, Jeffersonville, uh, or a couple of them, uh, but th th to say the least. But a lot going on. Indiana plays again on Sunday. we got Todd Leary today to talk about last night's game, a big, big win by Indiana as they continue to uh, lay down tracks for the NCAA tournament. And uh, they keep winning, they're in. They just need to close out 
with a win over Rutgers on Sunday at home, uh, which I don't see them having any problems with. And they need to win. Uh, I think they need to win two games of the Big Ten tournament. I, I think they might be safe with one because they're going to be playing on Thursday. That means their Friday game, uh, if they win Thursday, would be against a pretty good opponent. So you're not going to get hammered too much for losing to uh, one of those guys. But it's also another opportunity for Indiana to, to, to put another nice notch on their belt with another win. If they can do that, then they're definitely in for sure. But, man, oh, man, how about that game last night? Indiana looked great uh, on both sides of the ball. Uh, although it, it, Illinois, they, they did pretty good. They, they shot 50% for the game. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't play badly. Indiana just played that well. Yeah. Indiana got scoring from a myriad of sources across the board, led by, of course, Jawan Morgan with his 20 points, but uh, five guys in double figures, and then Deron Davis sitting there at nine points, almost had six, but a, a great team effort. Uh, but more importantly, great team basketball. Indiana playing great team ball right now, looking good. That's, without a doubt, as good as they have looked this season. Yeah. Not, not, I'm not talking about the Marquette game. or you know, doesn't matter. This is at the end of the year when teams are at their best and Illinois had been playing good. Bruce, or, or uh, not Bruce, but uh, Brad Underwood said he was shocked. He said, I didn't see this coming. He goes, man, if you'd have been with us this week, we had a great week of practice. They've been playing really well. He goes, man, Indiana is what's shocking people. They're playing extraordinarily well and they're playing way better than they had, but they're healthier. Yeah. Archie's got 11 guys he can bump in there. I think they had 11 different guys that scored last night. Hell, they barely had eight guys that were playing not too long ago. And if you don't think healthy makes a difference, ask Tom Izzo what healthy will do for you. Uh, it can knock you down in a hurry like it did Indiana. But right now they are, they're rolling, and they have the, every opportunity to uh, do themselves justice and put, them in the, put themselves in the NCAA tournament. We'll, uh, we'll see. But uh, Justin did a great job if you were listening in the first hour. Uh, did a great job uh, traveling and uh, – Finally got to my destination, and uh, but thanks a lot, Justin, for taking care of it. Did awesome. It was an awesome. Uh, I got to listen at least. Was trying to make but, you uh, proud. Did awesome, brother. <laughs> Great job. Uh, uh, text into the show. Josh texted it in and said, "If this team had beaten Iowa and Purdue at home, they would be locked into the tournament." Oh, of course. Well, for one thing, that would be two more uh, quad one wins. Um, but also, they, they, yeah, they, they had they, they, those were easy wins. Uh, if this team is playing half as good then as they are right now, they win those games because the Purdue game was the absolute one that makes you sick. You, you know how many baskets they had in the entire Purdue game? Fifth, they were 15 of 55. That's how, many, that's how many baskets they hit for the game, 15. That's awful. They had 22 in the first half last night. 22 baskets, not points, baskets. They scored 22 times in the first half last night. They scored 15 the entire game against Purdue. It's crazy. While That's putting up 46 points. They put up 52 points in the first half last night. Again, man, healthy makes a difference. Having bodies. Being able to bench Justin Smith after that Iowa game where he played six minutes. Look what he's done since then. <laughs> we talked about doing that, but he didn't have Archie didn't have the ability. He didn't have the players unless you want to run in the the walk-ons. And I'll be honest with you, at that point, I was fine with that because who's who do you care who you lose with? Because that's what the situation was. They were losing regardless. It didn't matter who you had in there. Yeah. So who gives a crap? So I, I do wish he'd have done that a little sooner. That's that's the one problem. That's the only thing that I. I have uh, uh, with Archie this year, but I, I think that maybe he was shocked, but he shouldn't have. He's the coach. He's there every day. He shouldn't have been. But uh, they definitely got it turned around right now. And, man, uh, there's so many different guys we can talk about that are playing yeah. well. Really it, it's are. like who, who, who you would start with, Rob Finnessy or Devontae Green. or uh, There's just a, a, everybody is really contributing, and that's why they weren't getting this year. That's why they were losing. Because Romeo and Jawan are not going to be there every night. And when they're not, you've got to have somebody stepping up. And they weren't. They weren't getting that. Last night, hell, everybody stepped up. Even Fitzner hit a shot. Hit a three, man. <laughs> Banged it in. 
Hey, something before I forget, kind of off topic, but not really. Uh, you know, the uh, FBI wiretap that we're waiting to hear more on in regards to um, Sean Miller out at Arizona and then uh, Will Wade at LSU. Will Wade, it came out that uh, a 2017 phone conversation intercepted by the FBI between Will Wade and basketball middleman Christian Dawkins features Wade speaking freely about a quote-unquote strong-ass offer he made in recruitment of a prospect, Yahoo Sports learned. Um, they, they go on to talk about it more, but he, he's having a conversation about an offer he's made to this kid who is now playing on their team that he couldn't believe that it that didn't happen, but he's he knows why because the guy that he's working with wanted a bigger piece of the pie. It's all bad stuff, man. Yeah. It's all bad stuff for, for for LSU's coach. And I'm assuming if this is similar to what they have against Sean Miller, it's not going to be good for him. No. Um, but when they say they have wiretaps and they're calling you in, probably not going to be good. When are these guys going to learn? Don't talk on the phone. If you If you have something to discuss, meet up in person. But, I mean, <laughs> that's not always, it's not always safe either, man. I mean, it's more safe. Yeah. Well, how about you don't do it? Yeah, that's a good point. But that's don't not cheat. that's not going to happen. Don't cheat. It was funny, Darren. We're not talking about we're not talking about buying somebody a a, a crappy car here, or getting somebody a job. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, man. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's 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 a different deal than than back in the old days no doubt huge on the tape uh, he expresses frustration that a third party affiliated with the recruitment had uh, not accepted the strong ass offer but uh <laughs> this is funny hey we got a lot to get to today man drew davis from uh, pigs.com is with us we're going to talk a little more ihsa uh and and some indiana ball todd leary's on with us of course we're going to talk about indiana basketball last night's win and of course what they need to do sunday uh, as they finish up the regular season against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. But uh, stay tuned. Hit us up on the text line, 812-269-6367. We're uh, up and at it. Uh, let's, uh, let us know that you are. We'll be back with more here on Indiana Sports Beat right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, Located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway, Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for it each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. 
If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you could fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch specials. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knobs. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm playing that tree, remember? remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, Make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. That was 7 and 5 in the Big 10. They had they they were not losing left and right. As a matter of fact, uh here's a nice little stat for you. Indiana now joins with Wisconsin as the only teams in the Big 10 to sweep Illinois this year. Yeah, Illinois has been a uh, much tougher out this year. They've been playing uh, a lot better. Uh, you know, Brad Underwood's done a good job there. They've really played a lot better once uh, conference play came and rolled around as they uh, they kind of struggled in non-conference play. But, you know, uh, so that's why their record isn't indicative of uh, the type of team they are. And, you know, I thought it was a really, really good win for IU just to go in there. You know, I, I heading into the game, I really wasn't for sure what, uh, you know, how, how that would play out. Uh, you know, I could have seen – IU was in the game just easily, so I could have seen them winning it. And uh, for IU to go in there and win by, you know, 18 points or whatever it was, uh, I thought that was a very good sign. And uh, I thought that showed a lot about the, uh, you know, growth of this IU team. Absolutely. And, and they are absolutely playing their best basketball of the season right now, bar none to me. Uh, they looked better last night than any, any game this season. I don't care if it was Marquette or whomever you want to talk about because the competition was a lot better. And this is the, the end of the season when everybody is peaking and playing their best. And uh, Bru- uh, Brad Underwood was, was shocked that Indiana came in and just basically imposed their will. On Illinois, he said that we've had a great week of practice. They've been playing well. He was shocked. But Indiana, what I think people are most shocked at is how good this Indiana team is playing right now after how poorly they were playing not that long ago. Yeah, you know, this Indiana team's kind of gotten it's, – it's, you know, when you look at this Indiana team, it's, it's not anything really special. It's not anything advanced. It's just effort level and playing together and being connected. Uh, you know, that's what the city MC was doing, and they did a, did a good job of it. And, you know, when you play hard, uh, a lot of things a lot of things fall into place. Uh, you know, when you don't have to worry about playing hard, uh, you know, you can worry about other things. And uh, that's usually a good time when you don't have to worry about that. And, uh, you know, for the city of a team to, to, to win three in a row after uh, that, that rough stretch, I think it says a lot about uh, the job our school has done with this group and, uh, you know, with their confidence as well. Well, absolutely. And then, as I said, they're playing their best basketball right now, and you can't ask of a better time for that to be happening. But Archie Miller talked about that very thing uh, in the postgame press conference last night. We definitely played better than yeah, we were. You know, uh, and uh, you even some of our losses the, uh, here. The actually, that was a cue to Justin to play that. Playing better. And uh, hard-fought games, uh, we've been in a lot of them. Okay. But I feel like our team right now is in a position that we've earned. Uh, 
the two losses against Purdue and Iowa, you know, the the effort level was different, you know, and that's where that things changed. Sometimes you can lose to, lose two games, and you know the upper the upper level, you know, be be where it needs to be. And I, I thought, you know, even though they lost those two games, that that was where it really started for Indiana. Absolutely, Archie talked about uh, Indiana playing their best ball last night in the post game presser. Let's hear what he had to say. Even in some of our losses here in the last couple of weeks, we've been playing better. And uh, hard fought games, we've been in a lot of them. But I feel like our team right now is in a position that we've earned some confidence back with how we've worked and how we've even lost some games whether it was the Purdue game or whether it was even the Iowa game, we're right there to win those two games. You come back and you're able to find a way to get Wisconsin and Michigan State. That took a little bit of the, the weight off your shoulders, and I thought the way we prepared this week and the way we came down here, you know, we've been the same team. You know, we haven't really got too high or low in the last uh, month, month, maybe, maybe last three weeks. And uh, the big key going into Sunday will be, can we just be the same team that we were to come in here? You know, that's the whole key. In the back. And that was Archie talking about how the team is playing some of their best ball of the year. And if you watched that game last night, no doubt about it. Absolutely. Is uh, I, I sat there and I was with Todd Leary last night, and after the first half, uh, I, I said that that was the best half that they had played all season long. They scored four, 52 points in that half. Uh, and, and they hit. I, I talked about this before you came on. Against Purdue, they had they they hit 15 of 55 shots for the game. Last night in the first half, they knocked down 22 shots in the first half alone. But not only they hitting shots, they were playing a team, Illinois, that routinely turns people over. They they turn the opponents over on 21 percent of their possessions. Last night, Indiana had two turnovers in the first half seven for the game that backs up the two in the second half against Michigan state, man, that is playing really, really well. That's taking care of the ball right there. Exactly. You know, any, anytime you can move the turnovers, like that, you have a chance to win on the road, that's what you want. And, you know, for Indiana, this team, when you look at all the categories last night, it's, you know, you get to see Indiana was doing the little things, uh, you know, whether it be just pounding them on the glass or points in the paint or, the fast break points or like you said turnovers the team like no matter what, what what you really looked at indiana came out with an advantage in that game and i thought that that really showed you know when you do the little things well it gives you a much better chance to win the game and that's what happened for indiana last night some future hoosiers are playing this weekend uh not a, not very many of them though because uh armand franklin's already been eliminated and trace jackson davis is still playing he's at the seymour regional this weekend Keon Brooks, we don't know where he's going, if he's going to be an Indiana guy or a Kentucky guy. And, and the word that I keep hearing is not favorable to Indiana. Uh, but that doesn't mean I, that doesn't mean anything to me until it's until it happens. I, I don't really put a lot of stock in it, um, but it's very, 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 very possible. But uh, we'll see on that's that decision is coming on the 15th. He's not playing in the IHSA tournament. Obviously, Keon Brooks is not because he plays at La Lemure Academy. But some great games coming up this weekend. Christian Lander knocked out uh, of the Evansville area, too. A lot of guys got knocked out already, man. Yeah, a lot of guys, uh, you know, got, uh, you know, knocked out in the sectional round. And as always, the United State tournament is tough. But even what, what it seems like it is going into it, it seems like uh, a lot of things are going to pop out, like you know, Chris Jackson Davis. They, uh, you know, they, they had to uh, you know, really grit out and, and Really went three three one team in the sectional. I think that just kind of shows you that no matter who it is, you're going to get their best shot at this time of year. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to a lot of great games this weekend. Like I said, there are regionals all over the place, but the Cebo Regional obvious, obviously always one of the great ones. You, you've got Bloomington South there. We had Joe, Justin Soakland on earlier, uh, very, very familiar with all those teams, but you've got a, a great Bloomington North team, or South team with Anthony Leal. You've got Trace Jackson Davis and Center Grove. You've got Jeffersonville, and then the outlier is Jasper, um, but some good talent is going to be in Seymour this weekend, which is now the largest gym in Indiana, I might add. Uh, I saw a post the other day that said that Newcastle has got to redo their numbers because it's not accurate and that, that Seymour is indeed actually the biggest gym in Indiana now. 
Yeah, you know, and you have those small seats that uh, you can carry it's real easy to, uh, you know, have, have a, a big number. And uh, Seymour is obviously a nice gym, but I always have to give him a hard time about uh, the, the small seats in the gym. But it's obviously one of the best places to watch basketball in Indiana. Dude, so many games have played there. So many guys have been – Damon Bailey era came through there. Pat Graham, Romeo Langford. I mean, so many guys have played tournament ball. at the, And there are so many people have seen tournament ball there. Last year alone, it it, it was the site of a sectional, regional, and uh, semi-state, which it wasn't the first year last year. But that, that gym was filled three straight weekends. That thing holds 8,000 people. It was filled over and over for three straight weeks. That's just there. If you think yeah, Indian no, high school was, basketball is dead, you're wrong. So I was thinking about that the other day, uh, you know, now this time of year, how, how much different it is for me this year than it was last year. You know, I had to get there a little earlier last year. It was, uh, it was always harder to get in the building to the Romeo and Lankford. Uh, you know, you see the crowd at the Seymour Sessional and Regional and on to the semi-state against Warren Central last year, the, the things that you you would you would see along the way is truly incredible. And I, I just I don't know if you've all seen something like that again for quite some time. And speaking of New Albany, a former player that played with Romeo, Sean East, I've noticed has been getting a little attention. Maybe he has something about Butler reaching out to them. I don't know what that means. Uh, obviously, a, an offer was not made, but. Uh, uh, Sean East, a point guard that played with, with Romeo at New Albany High School, uh, went off to um, one of the academies and, and is trying to work his way into a Division One program. Seems like he's having uh, doing pretty well by himself. Yeah, Sean uh, went out to uh, a fifth, went to a fifth year in the uh, Combine Academy in Toronto. Uh, and he's had a, he's had a really good season there. And he's put up good numbers, and uh, you know. Some Programs are, are starting to, 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 you know, have their their eyes opened a little bit with him, and uh, he's starting to catch some eyes. And uh, you know, with Sean, uh, he's a guy that uh, you know wants to be uh, at least a mid-major player, and uh, he's put he's kind of positioned himself to have a chance to do that. And uh, you know, like you said, Butler reached out to him. I'm not not sure about the uh, magnitude of the, the, those conversations, but obviously that's uh, obviously, you know, a, a real positive for him. And, it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up for uh, you know, his freshman year of college. Yeah, you got to tip your hat to him. He he wasn't happy with what was going on after high school. It wasn't wasn't getting the attention that he, he thought he deserved. or uh, So he bared down and uh, went off and put a little work in, and it's probably going to work out to his best interest, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. You know, he, uh, he's gotten a lot better. Yeah, you know, he's grown as a player, and he's kind of taken you know, his weaknesses absolutely and then what what are you what's your biggest game of the weekend high school game in the in the uh, regional action what do you think is are you looking forward to most of all who you does, who you looking to see play uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to most just, just to see what happens, and not only from like uh, a coverage perspective, but um, Warren Central and Ben Day. I, I think that's, that's going to be a really good game. You have DeWine Taylor and Jim and Wyndham on the uh, Ben Day side of things, and and when uh, one uh, you know regional semifinal, then you have uh, Jake, Jake Riva is going to uh, SIU Edwards now. You have Nigel Pack is going to be a high major player at the Division One level, and you have. Uh, DeAndre Davis, he's obviously committed to Nebraska. Uh, is the third part of the trio at Warren Central, and uh, I think I just think that game could be a really, really good game. Uh, the, the two two and E teams usually always always meet and you know have a good game when they play in that regional semifinal at Southport. I don't expect anything different this year. Absolutely. Looking forward to lots of big games this weekend. Looking forward to to seeing the results of those, all of them. Uh, and then, of course, Indiana taking on Rutgers on Sunday. Uh, they wrap up the regular season before they head into the Big Ten tournament. How about the women, Indiana women, uh, winning their first tournament game against Minnesota in, in convincing fashion last night? Yeah, they've had a great year. Uh, you know, they obviously had to replace uh, Sarah and they, They've kind of done that uh, really nicely. And then, you know, they've got good guard play. 
and uh, you know, Terry, Terry Moran's done a great job with that team. So, uh, you know, Indiana, Indiana sitting there with a, a really, really good team this year, and uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens the next next week and week or two with them. They've got everybody coming back except for Kim Royster. They're going to be loaded next year. They are going to be really good, and they've got some good recruits coming in. This women's team is going to be really good next year, so look out for them. We appreciate it. But, Drew, we appreciate you joining us as always, man. Look forward to it. We'll see you on Sunday uh, at uh, in Bloomington as IU will take on the Rutgers Star- Scarlet Knights. Yeah, man, I look forward to uh, seeing you there, and uh, I'll talk to you on Monday. Sounds good. Drew Davis and Peace.com joining us as always. We appreciate him. We've got more coming up. Todd Leary joins us next here on the program. Stay tuned. Indiana Sports Beat back right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. And I'm Justin Kalen with Indiana Sports Beat. Justin, what's your favorite show? It's got to be Indiana Sports Beat, but I'm not ever sure where to find it. Well, you can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on Big X Sports Radio, 1450, 96.1 WXVW in Southern Indiana, and 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. If you want to get your day off to a good start, then stop at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knob. While you're filling your gas tank, you could fill your own tank with a hot breakfast or try one of Billy Joe's daily lunch specials. Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart opens at 5 a.m. and everything is made fresh daily. And if you bring your own mug, coffee is only 50 cents. And Billy Joe's also has free air. The best place to start your day is at Billy Joe's Gas and Food Mart on Highway 150 in Floyd's Knobs. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business Welcome days before Indiana any Sports digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried Friday. utilities. Joined this includes natural gas. Todd Leary, it's been a long time since we've spoken, man. <laughs> yeah, what's it been, a couple of hours? Yeah. Uh, Todd and I were at uh, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville last night for After the Game with Todd Leary. Extraordinarily popular. People love to hear from 
the man, but uh, with good reason. Great insight, great, great insight on that game last night, but a great a game that gave us something to talk about for once in, in a positive manner, but uh, in a lot of different ways. Yeah, it was. That's the, that's the kind of game I think uh, Indiana fans have been expecting and waiting to see for a while. And um, you know, I, we beat them down so much over the last uh, month or so about not having you know guys step up and people off the bench come in and play to their their potential and the starters play to their potential. And, and last night it was one of those games where you know. You, you would have to struggle to come up with guys who didn't have positive contributions when they were in the game, and that was uh, that's an awful nice thing to be able to talk about. Yeah, especially when uh, we were – it was the opposite. We were looking for something positive to say right. about somebody for so many games because it just wasn't there. But last night it was there in abundance. I hope they didn't uh, waste too much of it because, man, they, they had it a little extra – last night coming from all over the place different guys scoring at five different guys in uh, double figures and Deron Davis almost uh there as well with nine points but uh a great job by by uh Indiana not so much defensively well not that they didn't play good defensively but Illinois didn't exactly uh play terrible they shot 50 percent for the game they they shot 48 percent behind the arc um they turned the ball over 10 times which is not terrible but uh, they yeah. didn't play that bad. Indiana just played that good. Yeah, no, they did. O- offensively, that was – I think we could all probably agree that was the best 40 minutes of offense Indiana uh, has had this season. And, um, you know, it's just it, – it, I don't want to get too excited, honestly, not because, uh, you know, I, I'm expecting something bad, but because I expect it. I mean, I, I expect those guys to play well. Those are good players that I think throughout a good portion of this season um, have not had uh, everybody play well on the same night. And, you know, there's been some nights when no one played well. So that it's fun to be able to talk about the different uh, contributions that players made. But, you know, it's not, it's not surprising. Like, I'm, I, we expect them to do that. And that's kind of what we've expected to be able to talk about all, all year long. Yeah, I think that's why so many of us were befuddled during this season because we were expecting uh, performances like what we saw last night, right. and that didn't come. And we're like, man, this this team is a lot of smoke and mirrors here. They're winning by not doing the things they did last night, and we're just getting by, right. and it was left a little worrisome. But uh, they finally have come back around. But uh, they've got to keep this going now. They they cannot rest on their laurels, as I said last night. They've got a, a team coming in on Sunday, Rutgers. It's not exactly uh, going to strike fear into a lot of people, but you can't sit back. Uh, they, they've lost to this team. As a matter of fact, they lost to them this year, uh, I, I think, at Rutgers. Uh, they yep. lost to them last year in the Big Ten tournament. So Indiana cannot rest on anybody. And they've got, just got to continue to play with the, the the consistency and the aggressiveness that they showed last night. Yeah, you know, there's, there are several instances this season where, uh, you know, as a fan, we weren't sure they could beat anyone. And, you know, that, that includes the Rutgers of the world. Uh, they went there and got beat in the game. But, um, um, you know, you just generally expect to win, and, and this is what Indiana fans do because this is what we expect. But, you know, we're all Indiana fans, including myself, are kind of looking past this game on Sunday, and that's a dangerous position to be in. Uh, you know, we're, we're all assuming that's going to be a victory because it's the home game against the team that's, that's not that great. Um, and, you know, you, you, it would be hard. It's human nature for us to look past it. You know, already started talking about seeding for the Big Ten tournament and who that first game is going to be with, and uh, hopefully getting that win. And, and um, you know, you, you just as a player, um, that's that's. I always I keep referring back to my days, but uh, that's really the only point of reference I've got. Uh, but Coach Knight was just so good about not letting us do that. I mean, we we focused on it didn't matter who the opponent opponent was. Game days were fun and. Uh, you know, we had a job to do no matter who we were playing against. And, and I am I would be shocked if um, they don't come out, you know, excited and ready to play. I think the fan base will be good on a, a midday game like that. So kind of early in the day, I think the fan base will be excited about, um, you know, building off of that game you're talking about last night. And so hopefully 
Uh, you know, even looking past it, I'm still looking past it at that Big Ten tournament, and, and hopefully the players and coaches, I'm sure, won't be doing that. You know, one of question I have is, will Romeo speak Sunday after the game? <laughs> it's senior day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we've kind of seen that there in the past, back in Eric Gordon and that kind of stuff. And, I mean, that obviously he won't. But, um, you know, it, it will – for all intents and purposes, it's going to be his final game in Fidley Hall. Yeah, and uh, it makes me gets me to thinking. The he, he he stood back and kind of let everybody else have their moment last night. Um, I, I think he scored ten points, but he only took eight shots. He was there. It was there for the taking, but everyone else was really getting involved. And uh, I think he just kind of purposely kept staying within the flow of the game, but didn't try to overshadow anybody else because everybody was having some good games. Maybe he goes off Sunday. It's his last uh, regular season game and could possibly be his last game period at Assembly Hall. Uh, maybe he goes off on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, he, he you might expect that to happen. I, I was That's a, a huge sign of maturity, uh, and it really is, for a guy who has had as much notoriety and, and publicity and expectations, um, not just from the fan base and the coaches, but from himself. Um, for what his freshman year was going to be like. And I'm sure for the most part, uh, it wasn't what he was hoping or expected it to be um, from a wins and loss uh, perspective. But, um, you know, I was super impressed with the fact that he didn't force a ton of things last night. And maybe you could say didn't force anything. Um, and that's not an easy thing to do. I mean, he, he shows that he is a team player and not selfish. His defense, uh, one of your one of the guys last night uh, – commented on his defense last night and and it's really been that way for several games we've enjoyed watching him uh play defense it's not something that romeo has has been known for and and he has he's learned and he's played well and used his athletic ability and you know i'm I'm long-winded in saying i I was impressed at the fact that he did not force the ball last night in a situation where you know like you said he let everyone else you know it was kind of coming to everyone else and he Set back a little bit and didn't force it. Only taking eight shots shows a, a sign of maturity and a sign of that's a good teammate that you want to play with. He absolutely. His defense has really picked up. But last night, uh, he, he could have been more involved if he wanted to be. But I think he purposely chose to, to have the level of involvement that he did. Uh, and, and I agree with you. It is a great sign of maturity because he was right there. And he could have said, hey, I'm the guy. I'm going to do this or that. And the other thing. Didn't. Didn't try to. Didn't force it, like you said. Uh, yeah, and, the, ball, and the ball was in his hands a bunch last night. And he and he did a good job at driving and kicking it out and um, you know, he could have forced a bunch more shots, but but he didn't. And that's like you said, that's it's exciting to watch that. It, it was just fun. It was fun watching that team period last night. It was fun it watching was, yeah. them move, the movement, the ball movement, uh, the player movement. They they looked very much engaged in what they were doing last night. Yeah, I mean, and, and you can see, um, you know, if Deron Davis is able to play extended minutes, um, you know, I think teams are going to watch that film last night and, and whoever. Uh, they draw in the Big Ten tournament or whatever it is on this game Sunday. I, I'll bet we'll see a lot more double teams come under Ron Davis because not only was he able to score when he got the ball inside, but he also did a great job passing and getting other people involved and for some easy baskets. So, um, you know, that's something other teams will learn from. They won't let Duran have that opportunity to, uh, you know, use his good passing ability and, and make guys defend him and, uh, but it, it's to Duran's credit. He played great, and, and, as everyone did, but um, he did a great job finding people, and he, it was just fun to watch, just like you said, watching guys cut and move and the ball go inside and, and uh, kick it back out and make shots. It was, it was an exciting game to watch as a fan. Absolutely, and we talked about Devontae Green last night, and we've got to talk about him more. 11 points on four of six shooting, three of those, three of five behind the arc, uh, four rebounds, and six assists with zero turnovers. What an incredible night by Devontae Green. Yeah, I mean, he, and and you know, (laughs) we're giving Romeo credit for not forcing things. I think there's been uh, maybe more four shots from Devonte this season than anyone else on the team. And, um, you know, that's because he's, he's kind of played out of position a bunch. And he's a, he's a true shooting guard or two guard. Um, and last night and, and really the last couple of ball games, he's gotten to play more of that. He's been in the ball game when, 
Tennessee has been in the game and, and Al Durham and all three of them have played together. Um, and, and he's much more in his element when he's doing that. You could see there was even some instances last night on fast breaks when he would bring the ball down the court. I mean, he's not entirely comfortable doing that. Um, and you know, his entire career, other than at Indiana, was not spent bringing the ball down the floor. He's always coming off screens. He's been a shooter and a scorer. So um, I know I keep saying that repeatedly week after week, but but it's really paid off for him in the last two ball games because he's been able to play more in his position and, and you know he's played well and knocked down shots and looked a lot more comfortable. And it's not only benefited him, but benefited Indiana. How much better yep. is this team with him in that position and playing like he was last night? Yeah, I mean, it gives them that option of knocking down shots, and, and they're good shots. I mean, anyway, he's not a guy that's going to dribble around, and, and uh, he could do it. I don't, I, you know, guys get that mo where they're, you know, they're not guys that can can create their own shot, and he can do it. It's just not when when it's the best shot for Indiana and for him and his best opportunity at making it. So when he looks comfortable and, and he's a guy that's out there standing there making shots, obviously that is something Indiana's needed throughout the whole season. So it's great to see him do that. Other guys stepped up and have done it in the last couple of ball games too. But, you know, it, it's nice to see Devontae play in his role and, and knock down shots when they kick it to him. Talking with Indiana Sports Speed Basketball, Czar Todd Leary. Uh, this team has made such a turnaround. How Have you seen a team or been a part of one? But You probably weren't because they weren't that bad when you were on them. But that, that has made the turnaround this team has made from what the team we saw play just against uh, Minnesota uh, not that long ago against the team we watched last night and against Michigan State for that matter. Yeah, I mean, it is. It... To say, have I seen teams that have grown that much? You know, I will. Um, we were so tough on them, and, and doing the post game show is fun, and, and you know, we love talking basketball, so it's fun for us. But you know, we've been, I've been especially super negative on them because they've not played to the expectation level that I had for them. And, and when these guys are recruited and they come in with all the hype that they've had and all the publicity. People talk about how athletic they are and, you know, how well they shoot, knock down shots and can score. Um, Archie Miller's defensive schemes have always been good at Dayton, so we're excited to see that. And they played uh, below everyone's expectations, especially mine. And so, um, you know, it's nice last night. I think they probably they probably played right at what we expect from them. I don't think anyone did anything last night, you know. The, the game against Michigan State, you had Justin Smith that, you know, had a crazy shooting ball game. And he, and he, you know, that's something you probably wouldn't expect from him every night. The game yesterday, yeah. I don't think anyone played above. I don't think anyone did something that we won't, wouldn't be able to see them do again. Um, they just all did it at the one. same time. <laughs> yep, yeah, they did. They did. And, and look at what happens. I mean, I, we talked about it last night. But, man, you, you don't want to be the team that draws Indiana if they're able to come out and play together and play like that. No, and they seem like that they've got this. As soon as I say that, now they go out and lay an egg somewhere. But they, yeah, they seem no. like they've got this. They, 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 they actually seem like they enjoy it now. It's like okay, we're having fun. They're having fun together, and winning cures a lot. Oh yeah, no doubt. And, and you know, when it's almost it's almost visible. You can see it kind of click a little bit with them. They're enjoying playing together. Um, they're you know they're obviously. Uh, you know, success breeds success, and their confidence level is, is up. There's no question. I don't think anyone would watch all 40 minutes of that game yesterday that wouldn't say, from a mental standpoint and, and from a confidence level, that's a different team than we saw just for two or three weeks ago. So that's obviously happening at the right time. Hopefully it's not a game or two too late, and, and hopefully they can put another three games together and win three, win, get a couple more wins on the uh, books, and that would get them into the tournament, I think, for sure. So. Cool. I heard some some people talking earlier about Rob Finnessy. He's uh, he's played so well uh, since he kind of he came back from the concussion, but he wasn't back. It took him a while. Uh, but now that he's back, back his play is really uh, elevated. But I don't think you can pick one player and say that this is guy this is the guy that really turned helped turn his team around. I, I think it's taken all of them. It's taken Deron Davis getting healthy. It's taken Devontae Green playing under somewhat control. It's taken Rob Fennessey getting back and, and getting in, into the shape that he was in uh, to begin with. And it's taken Justin Smith uh, a kick in the butt to, to get his head of his butt and start playing better. But all that stuff has come to fruition right now. Uh, and so I don't think you 
say it's been this guy or that guy. I think it's been this entire team that has really brought this effort around. Yep, no doubt about that. I agree with all of those statements that, um, you know, this team is, um, you know, right now I, I, it's hard to say. So many teams deal with injuries um, and guys being out for the year. I mean, heck, look at Michigan State right now. I mean, they, I know Ward's out, but, uh, you know, the – is it Langford? I think Langford, Langford, Josh guy. Langford. Yeah, yeah, they have a Langford Yeah, I mean, I mean, losing, what, it, what it, 13, 14, 15 points – uh, that's coming back from a guy who would be a senior and it has tons of experience. I mean, everybody deals with the injuries and they have that, but it, you know, it just seems like there's not been a situation throughout the season where um, Indiana has been able to rely on everyone. And you know, Jim, where that factors in a bunch is in practice. And when you don't have 10 guys in practice that are healthy, that are, you know, that, that are at the same level you need to be practicing against, um, you know, it could kind of show, and I think that's probably had some impact on this team. And um, you know, I, I would almost bet you they've practiced against some walk-ons and uh, probably even some managers. I know back in our day, we had some so many injuries. At some point, we had managers suiting up for practice every day. And, and you know, I, I, I could just say that at them being healthy is, yeah, we're obviously seeing the results on the court, but it's got to have a huge impact on what the coaches feel like you know, the pieces they could put out there and, and everybody's kind of playing to the capabilities that we expected them to have, including the coaches. Johnny basketball post you up. Nope. nope. <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> Todd Larry, appreciate you joining us, man. We'll be back Sunday. We're back in Bloomington uh, after the game of Todd Leary, the final regular season game. Uh, we'll be at Scotty's brew house in Bloomington. They're on walnuts. So uh, come out and join us, be a part of the live audience. Uh, but Todd, thank you, sir. Looking forward to it. Hope the play continues. Yep. I'm looking forward to it also. Thanks for having me. And uh, again, sorry to hear about your mother and take care of your family business, boss. Have a good day, brother. Appreciate you. I'll see Thanks. you on Sunday. Todd Leary. You bet. Great friend of the show joining us. And uh, we'll be back, like I said, with Todd Leary after the game with Todd Leary on Sunday, the final regular season game in Bloomington at Scotty's Brew House uh, as Indiana will be taking on the Scarlet uh, Knights of Rutgers. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for us. We've got a lot of high school games. Get on, go see a high school game tomorrow. No no games tonight, but the, tomorrow during the day you can go grab, uh, go go see some regional action somewhere. But uh, yeah, that's it's thing. been a great week. That's the thing when it comes to regionals. You can choose to watch them during the day or you can go see the regional championship at night. You've got options. Options are always good, man. Options are great. Options are always good. No doubt. Uh, especially when cause the, the games are all going to be good. That's another great thing. You don't have to worry about crappy games usually because at this level, they're pretty much all good. Except for if Center Grove gives us another uh, 29-28 ball game. That well, was kind of <laughs> junk. <laughs> Which they're playing Jasper, so maybe. Well, we'll see. But thanks a lot for joining us this week. we got a lot more coming up next week. Indiana Sports Beat returns on Monday. We're live at 6. But, of course, Sunday, don't forget, after the game with Todd Leary, Scotty's Brew House in Bloomington. Until then, for Justin Kalen, I'm Jim Coyle. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on the radio.